Welcome to another episode of Tales from a Professional Nerd. My name is Brian C.P. Steele, and I will be your nerd today and every other day that you watch my show or any other of my social media outlet -y type of things. Let's see. Um, so it's been, uh, it's been a good, it's been a good week, I think, all things considered. Um... The weather's been okay. It's just started kind of snowing on us right now, but you know, for the most part, it's been pretty solid. Nothing, you know. Uh, uh, I know you guys are used to me getting on here and going, you know, this broke, that broke, uh, had to fix this. It's been pretty normal. Uh, the new uh, the new service puppy is doing good. Um, he's uh, at this point, I think he's more or less housebroken. Uh, we haven't had any accidents in the house in a while. Um, He's he's smart, uh, which is good. I mean, that's definitely good for a service dog. Uh, he's going to hopefully take to his training very well. Um, but uh, he's smart in the way that uh, he remembers where things are. Uh, so sometimes to our chagrin, <laughs> he will put something away and like do the distraction factor of, hey, look at this, look at this, look at this. And then he's like, oh, okay, cool. And then goes back to what, you know, we, <laughs> what he was going after. Um, Natalie has bought him several of the, like, doggy learning puzzles, uh, that are, you know, you can hide treats underneath slides and covers and things like that, and he blurs through them really fast, um, so, like, it's, it, I think that he's gonna be a good, uh, a good candidate for, uh, a good candidate for, for being her, her seizure support dog, um, uh, we need to get him to stop trying to play. He keeps trying to... We have two cats as well. Um, we have Arrow and Larflees. And uh, Arrow is the old cat, and she doesn't really... She doesn't care. She's she's like, whatever, it's another dog. They come, they go. Um, Larflees is the, the newest member of the family before Barry, and... Uh, she is not okay with this new fluffy thing that has arrived in the house, um, and goes out of her way to, uh, torment him, um, but also, uh, Barry, uh, doesn't see the cats as anything but maybe small dogs, so he often, like, will grab one of his, like, tennis balls or something and, and bring it over to them and, like, hey, come on, what, you, you want to play with me? It would be great if you played with me. And whereas Arrow just basically walks away like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Um, Fleazy takes it as a, uh, as, as an affront. The, how dare you ask me to play with you, dog? And up comes the hackles, t tail goes into fluff, and the batting of the face happens thereafter. So that's the, that's the big thing right now is that we really, you know, everybody... All the rest of our animals are getting along just fine, but uh, Larflees and Barry Allen are um, not just yet. Uh, Barry wants to be friends, and Larflees wants to be left the hell alone. Um, all right, let's see. What else? What else? What else? Um, work is going great. Uh, I'm about ready to wrap up on a cool chapter for the Spycraft guys. Um, we are plugging along on our Mighty Morphin Power Rangers uh, system slash game. I'm excited. I think like uh, I think you guys are gonna you know for you role players out there, you are going to have a blast with this. Um, whether it is uh, with the with our Mighty Morphin or if it's gonna be with one of the other licenses that we have lined up through Renegade. Um, I think that's going to be something that really does make people make a lot of people happy. So, I mean, I'm excited about that. Um, the uh, uh, I had a really good meeting today with the um, character inspiration uh, for the next Shadowrun novel, the one that I'm going to be starting here very very shortly. Um, get basically. Uh, the long story short, Catalyst Game Labs ran a Kickstarter, and one of the backing levels of the Kickstarter was uh, you could 
uh, have one of your characters or an idea of a character or whatever um, star in a in an official novel. Oh, sorry, that was all he. Um, and uh, uh, this was the first time that we really had a chance to sit down with uh, with with that the backer that I'm being attached to. Uh, that I'm I'm writing the book for his uh, for his backing level his character, um, and while I had an idea of what I wanted to do and a general outline and all that sort of thing of to to keep into the general meta of what we're writing for Shadowrun right now, um, we wanted to make sure that you know his character was well is represented correctly, uh, that we don't do something that is you know completely out of character for that for 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 his person uh, but also you, you want to catch you want to get the little things you want to get you know the uh does does he like uh it, it, does he have any particular um you know hang-ups about the the super weird stuff that's out in the world uh is he a is he a, a matrix junkie is he you know there's all there's all these extra things that just by looking at a character sheet sometimes you don't get to see um, so we spent about an hour and a half on the phone today, uh, and uh, I really got uh, a very, very good layout for the character that I'm going to be writing into this book, and um, I'm very happy. Uh, I was I was super worried that I was going to meet this person, this this Shadowrun uh, player, this backer, and the character was going to be some you know, again. Not that there's anything wrong with playing characters like this, um, but like sort of cookie cutter, you know, more metal than meat samurai. Uh, I'm a troll and I have an assault cannon, or you know, I'm I'm an elven mage and I've got giant hair, you know, or whatever. I was expecting a, a cookie cutter character, or I was, or I shouldn't say expecting. I was dr I was dreading a cookie cutter character, um, mostly because. Uh, it's easy to write for things like that, which is, you know, again, there's no problem with those characters. It's just you don't want to do them all the time, and especially if it's going to be something that stands out and is a, uh, a, a a special, like, you know, check out this cool reward for th for something you've done. You don't want it to just be basic. You know, just like, here's, here's the thing that we've read about ten other times with a new twist. Um, so uh, the... Th that sh that novel is going to be uh, definitely different than something I've done before. Um, we are we are absolutely going to touch on th some things that Shadowrun has not ever really looked at um, up close and personal. Um, and I'm excited. I'm jazzed. Uh, there are def there are a couple of chapters in that book that um, I'm going to have to slow my roll and and w wait for myself to get to. You know, like one because I'm so excited to write those particular chapters. Chill out. You'll get there. They'll be there. The payoff is better than just plugging them in early. So uh, that's that's what I got there for. So so, so Shadowrun stuff's coming along great. Um, and uh, I mentioned last week the uh, the unveiling of the Warzone Eternal uh, website um, or Web Warzone Eternal Facebook group. Uh, it has bloomed. It has done great. Uh, I, I want to say we're up to like f a little over 400 members um, in a week's time. That's solid for an indie game for for a, for a small a, a smaller game that isn't even out yet. I mean, like like this these are people who are just interested and want the news and want to know things about stuff. Um, but the conversations have been really good. Um, there was there was one thread about uh, representation. Uh, you know, uh, I hate to use the term PC culture, but um, the the you know specifically representation in our game and uh, whether or not we were going to be toning down some of the kind of moral grayness of the Mutant Chronicles, taking away some of that edge lord stuff, um, and the the conversation. While it did have a couple of moments that seemed like it might get a little. Eh, for the most part, the community policed itself. It did real well. Even, even the posters that I would say were um, on the on the the argumentative side. Uh, even those guys were still um, willing willing to say, ah, you know what, that's we'll 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 wait and see." Or you know what, it's not what I would like. I hope it's this way. 
you know, it, like so, it, it was it was nice. It was refreshing. Uh, I've been on way too many uh, uh, fan sites and, and and web blogs and things where uh, just as soon as you know two people disagree, it becomes. Uh, the end of the world and the thread gets shut down because everyone's screaming at each other in all caps. Uh, this this turned out to be actually a really nice discussion. And uh, at one point, um, Resnova, the moderator uh, for Resnova, stepped in and said, you know what, this conversation has come to its natural close. I'm going to go ahead and shut down commenting, but we're going to leave this here. He didn't delete the thread or anything. He left it here because it's a good thread to read. Even the stuff that we don't agree with, it's still good to read and then see where, you know, where, where, where the conversation goes, where the fans think, what, what, you know, where are the, what are the further, the further comments because the thread stayed civil because it said, you know, nobody was yelling at each other. No one was calling each other names it, it generally just stayed about the topic, the pros and the cons on the topic, and, you know, what what the, the individual, you know, points of view were. And then it kind of just kind of sort of came to an end. It said, you know, a, a representation for the company said, this is what we're going to do. This is our views on things. We hope you understand. And that was just a nice little kind of bow on the end of it. And so uh, the Resnova mod popped in and closed the closed the thread, but didn't actually delete it. And um, most of the other threads have been just as civil. Um, there, uh, there have been a couple of discussions about um, different styles of Mutant Chronicles canon. Um, I actually uh, was unaware of there was a pretty hefty shift in Mutant Chronicles canon uh, when Modifius... Oh, I'm going to sneeze. I knew my nose itched for a reason. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, the When Modifius, the game company, uh, who is a great company, I, I love their company, uh, when they took over and created the Mutant Chronicles role-playing game, the, their version of the role-playing game, um, it sounds... now. I'm 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 slightly paraphrasing here because I have not done the research, and if I'm wrong, please tell me in the comments that you know maybe a different company stepped in and did it. But from what I have read thus far, um, it sounds like uh, the guys at Modifius, whoever they had on the Mutant Chronicles game, um, came up with uh, a slight a slight divergence in canon. Um, I shouldn't say slight. It's a pretty major divergence in canon, uh, where they invented a a whole new kind of sub faction from old Earth. Um, they 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 downplay the importance of the cartel and the Doom Troopers. It was just a, a pretty big. Uh, it's a pretty big sidestep from what I've known to be the Mutant Chronicles canon, plus the different Warzone games uh, that I've played and that are, that we've read about. So there was a pretty big conversation uh, that I believe is still ongoing on the Facebook page about where where do we see some of these canon threads, some of these uh, uh, some of these plot lines, where do we see them going or or, or having gone or or, or whatnot, um, and uh, even that something that is normally again if you talk to most people in most fandoms. Um, you start talking about what's canon and what's not, and people will start getting hot. Um, and for the most part, this thread has stayed very, very civil. Um, and I don't know whether or not that's just maybe that particular canon divergence uh, didn't have a, a, a huge following, uh, or maybe it's because it was so that it's it's so overall minor when it comes to the grand scope of things people are like eh, whatever you know if you don't want to use it you don't want to use it uh or maybe because it never you know this is a game for warzone players and the the this particular uh canon divergence has never shown up in a warzone product so they've never had to deal with it. So they've never had to read about it. They've never had to know anything about it. So maybe that's maybe that's it. Uh, whatever the case may be, uh, again, those kinds of threads are still saying really civil, really, really, you know, 
interesting to read, sometimes funny. You know, uh, people people get on there and be, you know, comic relief. Um, and uh, for more than anything, um, what I'm noticing... Uh, so for years, I was a was an admin slash moderator for the uh, uh, the Dark Age Facebook groups uh, or the Facebook group because uh, you know I was in charge of the game, so I I was the one that was kind of doing the posts and watching out for everything and whatnot. Um, so there are a lot of names that I remember from the Dark Age Facebook group that have come over to the Wars and Eternal Facebook group. Um, and I am, I'm hoping that that's that that's a that's a good sign that uh, uh, that community because the Dark Age community was one of the best I've ever seen. If they come over and bring uh, bring all of that awesome positivity and uh, you know pro pro game uh, pro fun mentality over to uh, you know to this group to the Wars of Eternal group. Um, I'm. I think that it's going to be easily one of the best wargaming communities that any game has seen anywhere. Um, we already have an awesome, uh, an awesome lineup with the people who are, who are talking about it now. I mean, hell, they don't even have a game to talk about, and they're doing a good job. Wait until they actually have stuff that they can agree on is cool, or you know, discuss battle reports or things like that. It's it's pretty all right. Like I gotta say. Uh, it's, it, it is very, it's, um, what's the opposite of disheartening? It is heartening. <laughs> it is very heartening, uh, to see, um, the game in its infancy or its pre-infancy be so well received already. Um, I know Alex has some, uh, some cool stuff up his sleeve that he wants to, uh, unveil, uh, at some point. Uh, or, or, or at least like start tricking, trickle out some information here and there. But he doesn't want to get you know too far ahead of things because then you know if we give everybody a bunch of you know here here's here's all of the sample, all of the cool, all of the cool, and then like we gotta wait six months for the Kickstarter, you know, it it kind of defeats the purpose of having uh, the the engine uh, or the the Facebook uh, Facebook group. So I'm hoping. That even I, if I can get a couple of a couple of hours this weekend or something, I might put together a uh, a fun little uh, a, a fun little article or something to put on the the Facebook group. That might be fun too. Um, but yeah, so there was that. Uh, yeah, just a lot of good work. A lot of uh, everything's being really steady. Um, we in uh, the. D D game where I am a uh, capoeira cat monk, a cat catoera monk. <laughs> I love it. Um, we finally got to sixth level, uh, which is a huge level for for monks in general, but it's even more so for the way of the rhythm of rhythm and flow. Um, so as a sixth level monk, my guys, my my attacks are now magical. Which is awesome because it means now I can, all these things that are reducing my damage by uh, damage output by half, uh, I now that's not that that's going to get to go away. So that's that'll help a lot. Um, but then on top of that, I get uh, the uh, it's the, the the way of rhythm and flow thing. It's what is it? It's not swaying steps. That's what's a that's the defense modifier. Um, crescendo think maybe um basically as long as my character does his little dance multiple rounds in a row uh his attacks get get faster and stronger um to a certain there's a there's a max point obviously um but that's going to be a huge help because we do a lot of we do we get into a lot of combats that are just slightly out of our league um and we end up uh, getting you know caught into the thick of things, and I think if I was put into a situation where I had to, uh, where where I had to stay around the same area doing my little dances, it would be nice to get some some benefit from that. So that'll be cool. 
Uh, we, we play that game tomorrow night. Um, and for those people who have been watching, I know it has been a long time, but the next, uh, the next session, uh, the next episode of the Arcane Promise, our Spelljammer 5e, uh, industry, industry gamers, uh, online game, uh, has been scheduled. We finally, we got through all of the holiday madness. We got through all of the, the, uh, the, the various, well, I've got this thing going on this weekend and we, we finally got everybody to agree to a date. Um, so, uh, Hopefully, here very shortly, I will have another episode. As long as nothing gets in the way, nothing gets crazy, I'll have another episode by the end of February um, put up so you guys can watch that story some more. And then hopefully, that will also get us back into the think, back into the process of things, and we'll be able to uh, keep going with it and, and stay stay a little more uh a little on the on the the, the regular than it, it has been because i know it's been a while um yeah uh i think that's just about it as far as the week at brian it's been all just work a little bit of game um uh played uh played some xbox with one of my friends the other night uh the new uh used the new van sar gang for the necromunda video game um, that's fun. Uh, I, I like the Necromunda video game anyway, but playing, playing with, uh, playing with, with my friend in a, in a, a, a match against each other, uh, was, it I mean, yeah, it's video gamey, but it's like, honestly, it's like the tabletop simulator on Steam, uh, you know, you're you're moving individual pieces. You're deploying them. You've got a mission. Uh, we we played a, a an exhibition game because we weren't really sure. We wanted to make sure we knew what we were doing. Uh, but the next time we're gonna play, where like actual injuries will matter, and you know, if we find loot, we'll get to keep it. You know, so, the, so that's it, it's cool. It's, it, it almost gives you an opportunity to run a uh, like a like a Necromunda campaign. Uh, with your friends over Xbox Live, so, but I got I used my Vansar for the first time, and uh, uh, I, I I dig them. I'm hoping they add more gangs in the the near future. Uh, right now, there are only the four the, the, the three starting gangs plus the Vansar. Um, I'm hoping that they add more, but if they don't, we'll still have fun with these four. It's fun. it's it's a, it's just a generally fun game. Um. Speaking of, is actually that Necromunda game that uh, inspired me to have today's topic be today's topic. Um, so, in Necromunda, there are, uh, you know, it's a, it's a gritty world, it's a grimy world, everybody's fighting each other. Um... In the 40k universe, the greater 40k universe, like not just, um, you know, oh the grim dark soldiers on the soldiers, but like the actual like in the cities and the in the the hives and things. One of the things that uh, have always been kind of uh, omnipresent are combat drugs. Are uh, you know this this injectable that uh, you know you're guy rages out or the the adversar assassin from the uh the imperial guard or the assassin Aurum, um has always been like every description of him is that he's just filled to the brim with a cocktail of of combat chemicals and you know just like his eyeballs are, are boiling in combat drugs um there's always been a place for um, these these narcotics, effectively, you know, combat narcotics in these games. Well, in Necromunda, there are also um, there there are also other kinds of uh, of, of, for lack of better terms, drugs. Uh, there's you know st stinger mold and uh, uh, what is it? Uh, stinger. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I should have written down a list. Um, you know, stinger mold and zoom and, you know, there's a bunch of different, um, 
combat drugs or any combat drugs, a bunch of different drugs that have different effects on whether you're you're using it or you're putting it on your weapon or you're you know you're using it to dull the pain or uh, to sharpen your senses. You know, they're they're technically most of them are recreational. Uh, recreational substances for these gangs, these 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 uh, uh, down in the depths of of the Necromunda hive, you know, this, this is one of their ways for them to um, momentarily enjoy their life, I guess. Uh, and uh, some of them have, uh, uh, you know. In, you know, uses in between matches. Some of them are purely narrative, and then there are others that actually have stuff that that can happen if you use them in a game. And it it made me think when Brian and I started our exhibition match. It was uh, he he and I versus a larger, better computerized gang. The very first thing that the computerized gang did is that all of their characters. You know, would just, they just all did different ver different drugs like in their first round? You know, they're just like, and I'm off. You know, doing doing their various their various things, and it made me it made me wonder uh, how prevalent in other games is drug use. Um, and so I kind of, I started today, I, I started thinking about it a little bit, uh, because I know in, in recent, in, in recent, we'll say year, we'll say in the last year or so, um, there has been a big push for content warning, uh, trigger warnings, things like that in gaming, um, is, you know, uh, if, if a game is going to be uh, remotely sexual, you know, let your let your players know or find out if they're okay with it. If it's going to have you know children being hurt, you know, or or if, if somebody is particularly arachnophobic and your this entire session is nothing but giant spiders biting your face off, um, you know, there's been a lot about uh, making your your table, uh, your game table, the kind of place that all of your players aren't squidged out by that they're that they are they feel good being there they're enjoying the game no matter what you're doing and uh while i do i mentioned before that i i, I both agree and disagree um to the different severities that people have gone uh to 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 bubble wrap their table uh socially speaking um which that's not a negative i'm not don't don't take that as a perjurative it's, I'm using that as, you know, it's protecting people. Um, it's doing what bubble wrap does. <laughs> like, that's, that is not me being like, oh, you gotta bubble wrap your table because people are afraid of corners. No, no, I'm, I'm, I mean that literally is, you know, by, by making sure that no one's, no, you know, no one's gonna come to your table and get, you know, ticked off by what you're running or that they don't, that they co don't come to the table unprepared for what you're doing. Um, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, that's, I'm, I'm using bubble wrap as an absolute positive term. It's just a, a, a verb of you're taking the extra length to collectively make something, uh, safer for, safer for everybody, even if they don't need it. Um, and, uh, one of the things that I thought about when I started talking, started thinking about different games is, uh, drug use is actually pretty pretty common in games um you know in one of my one of my best friends D, &D game um his D, &D his homebrew world uh there is a a, a powerful stimulant plant uh called black root uh that causes your gums to go black and it's, it's basically like like raw cocaine twigs um, you can make a tea out of it, or you can rub your gums with the, these like these like broken broken roots, and that's always you know I thought about it. I was like, huh, okay, that's always been something that in his games. There's always you know uh, you go to the go to the the seedy tavern to talk to somebody, and there's a black root dealer. Um, or that you go to like the one town in the empire that just doesn't care about, you know, law and order and their tavern sells black root tea, you know, it's a, it, it, it has been, you know, then, then there's always characters 
uh, you know, we've had characters uh, that, you know, have been played or portrayed in his world with other people running that are like Blackroot addicts, you know, and it's just, it, I was like, all right, cool. Because in regular D&D, you don't see it very often, um, honestly. Uh, you might run into something that's like, this substance is addictive. But it doesn't, it's not like a, this makes the, you know, the, the, this, this, it, you know, makes the player hallucinate or anything like that, or or if not, it's probably a poison. Um, but even in Lord of the Rings, you know, Halfling Leaf, there's no question, you know, all of us can roll our eyes and say, well, it could be anything. We all know what Halfling Leaf actually is. Uh, you know, it's, there's a reason why halflings are happy, happy pudgy people, um, because the weed is legal for them. Uh, the, the, you know, you go to, um, oh, hell, one of the video games that I'm playing, Cyberpunk. Um, I've been playing the Cyberpunk 2077 game, and your primary healing source is this, like, chemical inhaler uh, that you take the giant hit from, and the whole world goes all wackadoo for a second, uh, but your health starts growing. Um, uh, in in Shadowrun, there's all kinds of inhalers and slap patches and, you know, injectables and things like that that, that all do a variety of different crazy things. Um, some, you know, and then there's also the old, the, the standby, there's a... Uh, uh, what is it? Awakened. Oh, it's it's basically mage mage marijuana, like, but I can't remember what it's called. Um, oh man, that's gonna that's gonna bug me. Uh, but then there's also Nova Coke, which guess what that is? It's cocaine, just with Nova attached to it. It's it's more powerful. Um, it's you know, like, so just, I was, I was kind of thinking, and I was like, you know what, there are so many games out there, a lot of video games, a lot of video games, um, but a lot of tabletop games, uh, and some miniature games, Necromunda, for instance, uh, have these, these chemicals, these, these narcotics you know at least, at least in Shadowrun there's specific rules for being addicted to them so there are negative drawbacks to, to taking such things um, but like it just it made me wonder if there's anybody out there that comes to the table you know, would come to a table and during that uh, the that session zero conversation about you know, what you don't want to see, what you're not okay with. Um, for the most part, when someone says, I'm not okay with this, I'm not okay with, uh, you know, sexual contact. I, I, please, please don't flirt with my character. Please don't put me in a situation where uh, I'm going to be dealing with uh, child abuse. You know, uh, don't, don't have us in an aquatic area. I'm terrified of drowning. You know, for the most part, those are storyline decisions but like when you take it when you say okay i this game is going to have in its inventory the ability to purchase narcotics of various kinds whether it's combat drugs or uh you know or, or some other kind of you know psychotropic or something like that you're going to be able to purchase these and if you're able to purchase these that's not a that's not a plot trigger. That's equipment. That's I spent my hard-earned gold on this stuff. Or you know, I'm I'm playing Necromunda, and I decided that my entire team, everybody needs stinger mold. They all got to get hopped up on stinger mold before they they go into the uh, they go into the arena. And if another player had had issue with that, like you know, maybe. I, I'm not. I don't, I'm not even going to presume to guess why they would be be upset or triggered by, um, by another character having you know using drugs, whether or not they have a drug abuse problem, or if they're just using a, a, a medical medical situation, or just combat drugs in general, or whatever. Um, I wouldn't presume to know why, but it does lead you to a situation where, unlike at a table situation where 
one player starts to do something that the other player just thinks is skeezy or is is you know affecting them mentally on a you know affecting them negatively mentally asking them to stop is easy that's just hey let's let's not have this scene let's go by let's let's call that a stop you and I can talk about how the scene goes privately and then pick up where we left off. Um, unlike that, this is stuff that's like, these are items that your character has acquired. These are, you know, whether they purchased it or found it or made it or, or whatever, they've, they've used character assets or time to acquire this stuff. And now let's say that they go to use it and one of the fellow players is like, I, I can't, I, I can't have drug use on the table. Where does that put you? You know, obviously this, the, you want your players to be happy. So you do have to, you, you, you don't, you, you do not look at the person who's complaining and be like, oh, suck it up. You know, you, you don't, you, you don't do that. You, you follow their feelings and you help them try, you help everybody try and come to a, a, a a proper solution even if that solution is all right you know mike you can use your combat drugs but it's more like uh you're eating a combat biscuit you know, or, or you change the way it works so it's not it's not drug use it's a spell effect it's a you know you're drinking a potion uh instead of instead of eating this this pile of mold or, or whatever and Again, yeah, the effects are the same. You know, nothing's changing as far as what is happening in the game, except for the fact that hopefully one of your players is less upset or less bothered by a situation that collectively you guys have created. But it does it it does make you wonder, especially so it let's have that same uh, that that same situation where a player goes, I really am not okay with with drug use at the table, in game obviously <laughs> or out of game, um, and the other player goes, well, yeah, but I spent, you know, copious amounts of my money on all these combat stims. Um, I want to use them, and the game also like Shadowrun has rules for what, you know, what the addiction factor is. And what if the player who's bothered by drug use is not bothered by the drugs, but bothered by the idea of the, the negative, the, the negative aspects of addiction? Um, you know, maybe they, they, maybe they have an addict in the family and they definitely do not want to role play with one, you know, when they're, they're trying to get away from the, 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 the heaviness of real life. So I, I absolutely see where it's possible for a player to be like, please, I'd rather there not to be any, you know, drug use at the table. Um, but I also, there is also a part of, there's that, there's that little gamer bug in the back of my head that says, if you're playing Shadowrun, you know this is a world that is pretty messed up and a lot of people are using a lot of drugs to get by because it is so messed up. It is such a such a crazy world. If you know that going into it, you have to kind of seal yourself a little bit to know this is something that might happen. One of my fellow players might even be one of those kinds of people in the sixth world that use these to get by. Or, you know, the opposite. I, I've seen this guy fight. He moves at a... Moves at a you know, five times the speed of a human and is twice as strong. Oh wait, now I've now that I've met the guy, I found out it's because he's pouring pure dragon adrenaline right into his veins. You know, yeah, I'm sure that's bad for you. you know, so like, you you kind of have to look at it. You kind of you kind of need to look at it from the perspective of the game itself. Um, and and again, if someone is truly bothered in these instances. Don't alienate them. Don't push them away and be like, no, don't be like that. You know, be be tougher, get better. You know, no, you, you want to try and talk it out with them. You don't want to try and find that sweet spot that, you know, they are okay with 
uh, okay with this, okay with that. Maybe don't push, put, you know, don't push the line so much. Um, and you know, and and I'll say this, and I know some people are probably going to give me a little bit of grief for it, but if you are one of those people that are negatively affected by a scene or negatively affected by something and you have not brought it up to your 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 dungeon master your game master your storyteller whatever yet um do so take the time write them an email let them know uh because the last thing you want to happen is your uh your actual like game night comes screeching to a halt because you're like whoa 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 i am not okay with this uh, because it is going to turn into a situation where uh, several other players are going to be like, "All right, what is going on? Great, let's why, why is this? Why why are we dealing with this right now?" <sighs> Obviously, hopefully, <laughs> you, you, the players around the same table should all, hopefully will all be friends and everybody can get along and everybody will be a okay with whatever needs to whatever needs to happen to to fix the situation. Um. But if that's not the case, if you can't, if you can't come to a, a, a nice, uh, a, a nice middle point or, um, just take, you know, basically take that person's feelings into consideration and adjust what you're doing, um, you, you need to be aware that it can cause ripples in the pond, so to speak, um, you know, by, by disavow, you know, disallowing, uh, you know, the, these combat drugs to be used, if a player had built their character specifically to use those drugs, you know, to, to kind of cut corners and, and, you know, make the fast way to being a super powerful character, um, and now you, and then you just wholeheartedly cut them off and say, nope, you can't do it anymore, um, that's, they, they are probably going to resent that, that, uh, that decision. And while it's it's good that you're protecting your player who has a problem, you don't want to alienate the other players too. You want to try and find some nice middle ground. And hopefully, if, if everybody at your table are friends, they will work with you to find that middle ground. Um, and that's, that, that's honestly not even just a drug use in games. That's a... That's a, that's a universal. If someone has a problem at the table, um, I know me personally. I cannot stand interparty conflict. Um, I I don't mind a discussion. I don't mind a debate, but I cannot stand when someone goes, "Ugh, I punch him," or I well, well if he tries that, I'll kill him. You know, it's just. We're supposed to be having fun. We're supposed to be playing this game to have a good time. And if you guys come to blows, especially drawing weapons or shooting each other or casting spells on each other or whatever, that party dynamic will never be the same. Even if both of you live, even if the, the characters get separated and, and like say they're sorry, and it, it will never be the same because there will always be that instance from the other players that look at that one that goes, that guy will draw down on us if he disagrees with us that much. Or that guy will, will defend a bad decision to the death. There's always going to be, there's always going to be that little voice in the back of the head that says, that guy has no problem trying to kill another player character. Keep that in mind. Or that guy's so stubborn, he will, he, he, he will defend himself mightily uh, against something that is, probably something that could have been talked about uh it you know it's just these are the things that you have to deal with these are the things you have to think about um and i my personal view is i think the use of chemicals the use of drugs the use of combat drugs stimulants hallucinogens whatever spirit walks whatever whatever you Whatever you want to have as part of your, uh, as, as as part of your world or part or part of the world as written, um, so long as it is fair to the game, um, and I and I mean that in a rules a rule situation. I mean literally, if the uh, 
you know, don't make, don't have a, a set of combat drugs turn a effective second level character into something that's a clean and six level clocks uh, because it's going to be problematic. Uh, any kind of item that can instantly just pile fling you up into into the into the stratosphere when it comes to your power level um you have to remember that unless it f plateaus somehow unless as a chemical it stops functioning uh or, or stops functioning at a certain level um the upper level people can use it too you know there's there's nothing that says that if if the big bad guy goes wait a minute those guys all did this, you know, injector thing into their arms, and then they beat my my sub boss. They beat my lieutenant to pieces. I better get a hold of one of those things. Then maybe if if it's that useful, maybe the bad guy gets some. You know, all right, let's do this. Uh, you know, because we've we've seen it before in comics. Uh, we've seen it before in TV shows. You know, sometimes the bad guy sees the what the what the good guys have done, and goes, well, "It's good for you. It's good for me. I can do, I can do this too." Uh, so that is one of the things that you have to kind of keep in mind that if you are using um, game-altering chemicals for your characters or chemicals or plants or whatever, um, game-altering uh, drugs in your, uh, for your characters, that that's basically saying that this exists in this world. And again, yeah, I mean, I, obviously Shadowrun, Cyberpunk, you know, the, they they do exist in those worlds because they're in the equipment section. But like, if you're listening to your home, own homebrew world or your own uh, your own adventure in an existing world, or like I said, D and D really hasn't highlighted any. There's a few adventures that I know of that might mention a particular substance, but like for the most part, there's nothing that's like in the Forgotten Realms. This thing exists. And if you decide to make that thing truly exist, that it's not just something that exists for the players, um, unless for whatever reason you're 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 only ever fighting against the undead, and your bad and your bad guy's a big lich or whatever, and you know none of this stuff would work on the undead, then sure, then you know, then you then you you have created an edge for your characters that no one else can have. But for the most part, there should be lots of opportunities for other uh, other beings out there, other adversarial beings that could also use that that extra edge, that extra little oomph that you've that you've created when you created that item when you said your characters are cool to use it. Um, there's another another way you can do it uh, is you can also make it a narrative thing. Um, I once played a character in, in an old Spycraft game that uh, my my stats. I was very physically very very strong, very fast. In fact, actually, I had purchased the the stuff to make me faster and stronger than what a normal person could be. Not like Captain America or anything, but like definitely augmented beyond your your average peak human. And. Uh, the, when it came down to it, uh, one of the things that we had said that my character, the reason why I had these things is because he was on a daily, you know, a daily injection circle sort of thing that he, he's got these chemicals that are running through him that he has to use all the time, uh, to keep him going. But these, the, these combat drugs were why he was stronger and faster, not a legitimate, game use thing where it's a here is this injector that if you use this injector suddenly you know my stats change it was i have good stats because i've got this chemical regime that i have to do um now it would have been up to the the storyteller or the game master to decide what happens if somebody gets a hold of my medical bag and they use it you know, I know for me personally, what I would have done as a, as a game master in that instance is I would say the reason why it works for this guy is because he does it every day and has for 10 years. You use it. You might have a, a couple of hours of, uh, you know, I can do 70 push-ups <laughs> or, or let's go, let's go run a mile and like a bunch of the sweats and I'm going to go eat a, an entire pizza by myself. But unless you also do this for a constant, dun, 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 you know, forever, 
uh, you won't have that superhuman ability. You won't have that 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 extra the the extra that he has all the time because he has it running through his system constantly. But it, it, you're not actually inventing an item that someone else can use. That's basically what I would what I would say in that in that sort of deal. Um, but even then, uh, you know, if if God, if I playing that character, looking back, playing that character, if somebody would come to the table and been like, I am not comfortable with playing with a a a character that the only reason he is strong and fast is because he's on drugs. Um, I don't know what I would have done. Uh, in my youth, I would have probably looked at that person and been like, "Oh, come on, shut up." Uh, you know, suck it up. It's just, it's just, you know, pharmaceuticals. Um, but if they were really bothered, if they really legitimately had uh, a, a personal trigger that, you know, and, and obviously you never want to look at someone if they do have a problem and go, "Why." You know, and, and make them make them dig up their you know whatever's whatever's bothering them. Make them dig up that hardship to prove to you that they have this issue. You don't do that. Uh, that's just that's wrong. It's it, it is as as friends at the same table. You trust that they've got this issue. You 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 trust that if they want to talk about it, they will. But you don't pry. You don't force them to. You just go, oh, okay, you know what? I'll work with the DM. We'll figure out what's going on. Um, but yeah, uh, so if I in that situation, I probably would have been like, well, you know, and if and if they would have stuck to their guns and said, no, I cannot have, I, I can't. I, I can't role play repeatedly with a dude who's all drugged up all the time. Um, I probably would have looked at the the storyteller and asked if they could be turned into like bionics instead. You know, like I've got servos in my arms or, or you know my my chest has circuits in it or something silly. We wanted to try and avoid that because it was a spy game and we didn't want like going through a metal detector and be like that guy's a cyborg. Um, that's why we went with the we went with the the drug out the the chemical stimulant a aspect. Um, but, uh, either way, uh, that's, that is something that, that we would have had to work out, uh, because again, you don't want to chase somebody away from your table, uh, and you, the last thing you want to do is have someone every time they play, they're uncomfortable because of the decisions that you're making. That's, that's just not okay. The, the games are, the game, these games are designed to be played for fun and not to make people upset. <laughs> Duh. Um, all right, so uh, I think at this point I've 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 probably run on long enough about uh, generally drug use in games. Um, I also I, I do believe that there's a difference as well um, whether you're doing it in a role playing game, which is a very personal setting, where you're taking on a character and hanging out with other characters and making this collective story, than it is in like a miniatures game where you're just moving around, you know, pawns and meeples of different varieties, sizes, and complexity. Um, if those guys are using combat drugs, you know, it's just modifying dice. It's making them harder to hit or whatever in the game. Uh, I don't think... I don't... I, 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 it, I mean, I can't say I can't say for sure. There might be somebody out there that's like, oh, no, I don't want to put those guys on my army. But I think for the most part... Um, when it comes to a war game, you're not going to see someone having pers so personally invested in that particular little toy soldier that I'm going to freak out when they say that that little toy soldier just got, you know, j just shot up with combat stims. If, if, if you get what I'm saying. I don't know. The goal here, of course, is to make everybody happy. Uh, which is what I want everybody to do. I want I, 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 this week has been really good for me, and I'm hoping next week is as well. I'm hoping um, you know next time we we get to sit down and chat that uh, I have even more cool news about things and stuff. Uh, maybe hope maybe even some stuff to share. Um, I do know that my artist for the next DMs Guild, my monster supplement, has started to deliver me some rough drafts of some of the monster illustrations. So those are pretty cool. I hope we'll be able to share some of that with you soon too. Um, aside from that, you know, just be nice to each other, <laughs> stay safe. Um, and if you're at a uh, if if you're at a table, whether it's because uh, of combat drug use, recreational drug use, 
medicinal drug use, whatever. Um, if you've got an issue with it, be honest with your with your uh, fellow players. Talk to your DM. Work with them. Find that nice middle ground. Um, if you are not the person who has the problem, but you are the person who is causing the, the issue, please be open-minded and realize that they're not trying to single you out. They just really don't want to be uncomfortable at the table. So either way, I hope everybody's going out there, staying safe, putting on your mask. Let's get through this stupid pandemic. If you can, if your name comes up on uh, to to get the uh, uh, to get the vaccinations, do it. Let's let's knock this virus out so we can start getting together again and start playing in person, and so we can have conventions again. Let's do this. But above and beyond, please be safe. And before I see you next time. Go out there, have fun, and play some games. We'll see you next week.